welcome back uh, to our study, How to Hear from God. Uh, we're learning how to feed ourselves from God's Word. And in session number one, uh, last time, we talked about how important it is to accurately handle God's Word. And uh, we saw the value of it, we saw the reliability of God's Word, and then really the, the instruction for uh, handle things correctly. And I really want to pick up on that theme um, as we continue here. And uh, two really important verses found in 2 Timothy, you would have read these verses this week in your homework if you've continued in that. And in chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, Paul writes and says, Remind them of these things and charge them before God not to quarrel about words, which does no good, but only ruins the hearers. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. Hey, we have this word of truth here, and we want to be able to rightly handle it. And uh, unfortunately, there are times where uh, we do it uh, in a way that doesn't rightly handle God's word. We're not actually approved, and actually there's some really shameful ways of handling God's word. And uh, I believe by faith that you actually have a really high view of, of God's word, that these are his very breath uh, on the page. And, and so you're, you're concerned about rightly understanding and doing what it has to say. And, uh, but we have to acknowledge there are some wrong ways that you can study God's word that leads to some, some really terrible results. And, and when you think about it, 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 wrong ways, I'm saying inadequate like it just doesn't measure up to the right way of doing it. And so maybe you've actually fallen into something like this. Uh, maybe you get up in the morning and get your cup of coffee and you open up God's word and, and you read it. And then you really just kind of read words on the page and, and they don't make sense. And, and you just kind of read and, and, and don't look for an interpretation, the meaning that's really there. And oftentimes in our world today, what we fall into then is trying to find out, what does this mean for me? And that's an important question to ask in Bible study, but it's not the first question. It's not the only question you should be asking. What I find is that the people who just open to God's word and look for what it means to me often end up with what I would call strange doctrine. They, they read the read the verses out of context. They don't really understand the meaning of the author uh, in that he intended, and they come up with their own interpretation that does it. It's just strange. It's strange doctrine. Here's another wrong way that it happens. Sometimes people, like, they get really excited about God's Word, which is awesome. We should be. And, and they really begin to study hard what God's Word has to say, and they come up with all sorts of techniques and scientific things, and those are good things, by the way, but, but all they do is they study it, so they rip open God's Word, and it's this big, it's like this academic school study, and, and what happens is they have a lot of knowledge about what God's Word says, but they don't ever do it. And what we find here is that scholarly doctrine. It's, it's different than strange doctrine. It actually knows what God's word says, but it doesn't do what he says. And that those first two kinds of doctrine are really terrible things. Strange doctrine, scholarly doctrine. That's not what we're aiming for. Uh, really, uh, there's a third way you could read God's word. You could get your cup of coffee in the morning. You could open God's word and read a portion of it. And you could make some observations about what's going on. And you, should be, you can begin to interpret and, and read it for understanding. And then once you understand it, you can be like, well, I got to do this. Like, I, I can't wait any longer. Today, I got to start doing what God's Word says. And, and that's really the best way to study God's Word. It results in sound doctrine. And if you read anything in second, First and Second Timothy and Titus and Paul's writing to young pastors, he's like, be sound in your doctrine not strange, not scholarly, be sound. And here's the thing, the way that we get a sound doctrine is that we rightly handle the Word of God. And so uh, I want to teach you uh, about that here this, this evening. Uh, I believe uh, there's a number of different ways that you can study the Word of God rightly, but one of the easiest ways, the ways that I've been trained and the ways that I often use, it's called the inductive Bible study method. And the inductive Bible study method, it's, it's when you look at what God's Word has to say and you allow it to speak to you and then, and then you act on that. There's another way, you, it's actually a wrong way, it's deductive, where you come and you're like, I, I believe that the Bible says something, so I look and I look and I look for a verse that actually proves that, and I'm not worried about all the things that are said around it, but if it proves that, then 
and then I, I begin to believe and, and act on that. And that can lead to some very strange or scholarly things that we don't want. And so um, I, I want to teach you inductive Bible study method. Uh, the inductive Bible study method has three steps and it asks three different questions. The first question when you're reading God's word is you look at it and you say, what do I see? And that's making observations. That's step number one. The second step is that when you you see some facts and you see some things that are there, and then you begin to ask, what does it mean? And you're looking for understanding. And step number two is interpretation. And then step number three is it's called application, where you where you ask the question, how should I respond in light of this? And so when we look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, remind them of these things, charge them. Okay, so we're not supposed to quarrel, not do good, only ruins the hero. Do my best to present myself. I'm, these are observations. And, and okay, what does it mean? It means like I'm supposed to be, uh, I'm supposed to have a good understanding of God's word and know what to do. And so that, that's why I'm encouraging you. That's why you're doing this class. And we're trying to put these verses into practice to rightly handle God's word. Let me teach you and you learn the inductive study method of observation, interpretation, application. It's something you can do every day. It only takes a few moments and you're actually able to, to see these things. And so um, step number one and two, observation and interpretation is where you study God's word. And then step number three of application is where you let God's word study you and you do something about it. So that's what we're gonna see here. Uh, you know, I'm convinced that many times the problem that we have when it comes to reading God's word is that we have too shallow of an experience with God's word because uh, we, don't, we spend too little time actually looking at it and the result is a loss of spiritual nourishment. I remember when I was um, actually just recently married and my wife and I, we drove out to the mountains of Colorado and in Indonesia to visit some friends and to go skiing, uh, snow skiing. And so we were in Denver, Colorado, and that's about a mile high. And then we went up into the mountains to Breckenridge, the ski resort that was there. And we got our skis on and we were skiing down the hill. And about halfway through the time, my head just started hurting. By lunchtime, I could barely stand up. And right after lunch, I went up to the top of the hill and, and, and I fell down probably 15 or 20 times. Each time it was harder and harder to stand up. And, and so they took me to the aid clinic. And when I got there, they walked in, they knew immediately what it was. They said, you have altitude sickness. And altitude sickness is where you have a loss of oxygen and then you can't function as a result of it. I mean, I was laying on the table. I could barely lift my arms and legs. And they said, you, if you're going to stay up here for the night, as was our plan, you either need to receive a bottle of oxygen or you need to go back down to a lower area where there's more oxygen in the air. And we just decided as, as friends, you know what? It's not worth it. Nate's in pain. Let's, let's go down the mountain. And they said, okay, well, I just want you to know halfway down the mountain, you're going to feel like a new man. And sure enough, halfway down the drive to where they lived, I started feeling so much better because I had the right amount of oxygen in me. And God's word is like that. When we don't have it in us daily, we're, we're spiritually losing nourishment and we just can't function the way we're supposed to. And so that's why I want to teach you these things so that you can feed yourself, you can be nourished, you can have all the oxygen of God's word that you need to do that. But it, it's going to take some time to do that as well. And so I want to tell you a story. Uh, this is actually an oriental fable, and so some of you may have heard this before, but there were three men who were riding their horse through the desert in the middle of the night. And as they were riding along their way to, to get to their objective, suddenly there was a fourth rider that showed up, and it was an old man, and he was missing teeth and kind of wearing rags, and, and he just kind of was with them for a few moments, and he said, you're going to soon cross a dry riverbed. And when you get to the dry riverbed, I encourage you, get off and pick up as many stones as you can, put them in your pockets and your saddlebags. And in the morning, uh, when, you, when you look, you're going to be both glad and sorry. And so the men were kind of struck by this and thought he was kind of crazy, but sure enough, they came to a dry riverbed and they thought, wow, 
it seems, let's just see what happens. And they picked up a few stones and they put a few in their saddlebags on their horses and in their pockets and, and rode on for the rest of the night in the cool of the night until daybreak came. And they, sure enough, they opened their, their bags and they pull out of their pockets these rocks and they had turned into gems, diamonds and rubies and emeralds. And then they realized what the man said, that you'll be both sorry and glad for that experience. And you know what? God's word is oftentimes like that as well. There's no end to the wealth, to the help, to the, to the, to the preciousness of what God's word actually is. But when you begin to discover God's, the riches of it, you're just going to want more. And, and you won't be, you're, you're going to be sorry that you didn't spend enough time doing this in life. And you're going to want and you're going to be glad for the time that you have actually spent in it. And so let's talk a little bit about how to study the Bible, how to hear from God and feed ourselves daily. Uh, we talked about the inductive Bible study method, and there's three steps. Do you remember what they are? Can you say them right now? Observation, interpretation, application. And the rest of today, I want to teach you about how to observe the text of Scripture and ask the question, what do I see? So let's do that right now. Uh, what do I see? Oftentimes, this stage of observation, when you get into God's Word, uh, you just start reading in it, and, and you just you're, you're just kind of like reading. I, I got to read this chapter, I'm, I, I, and I got to get to work, and and we just do it too fast. That's a problem that I want to point out. Many times we just we don't spend enough time, we don't take enough time, uh, we don't we're rushed into things, and so what we find is too often we are very quickly rushed or maybe even just in a casual way, reading God's Word, when if we put a little bit more intentionality to it, we could actually receive the benefit of it. I want you now to stop the video and you're going to read a story. It's called The Student, The Fish, and Agassiz. And it's a great story that will drive home the point of how important it is to do, take time to do the step of observation and ask the question, what do I see? Pause the video now and just go ahead and read that story together. All right, there is great joy and reward in taking time and doing the work. I want you to know that each day, if you were to take time to observe a portion of God's scripture, that, that there's going to be great reward in that. And so you've done this. We've Last week, when at the end of the session, we did the practice the principle, and I just had you read through the book of Jude. Jude's one chapter, 25 verses. It's not long, and you just took time. I just, all you had was read it. But now I want you to do some observing and ask the question, what do I see? Now, I want to teach you there's three steps when you observe something. It's going to make sense. When you're observing a part of Scripture, step number one is to look at the whole. Look at all, like for Jude, look at all 25 verses. And then step number two is you look at the parts and you look at the, how they, the structure and how it goes together and begin to make sense of the logic of the author. And then the third part is you look at the details, the little tiny pieces of, of what's going on, one little verse, and you want to see how that one verse relates to everything else around it. You're looking at the details. What does this word mean? What does this sentence mean? Uh, what, does this, what does the verse mean? And so uh, the whole is the big picture overview. The parts are kind of the structure and how they fit together, and then the details, the little pieces of it. And it's, it's kind of like when you are doing this observation, it's like you are a miner of fine gems. Uh, I grew up in the country of Indonesia, and in the 1960s, there was a company that was looking to do some mining, and they were looking for copper. And uh, as they flew over a mountain, one of the geologists looked and said, uh, that looks like a, a mountain that's full of copper. We should mine there. And then they went to the exact location, and, and then when they started to dig out and looking for copper, and they found gold and silver. Actually, they found so much gold and silver in the first year, it paid for the whole operation to beginning to get going. And the copper mine has been a profit ever since. And and we can experience that in God's word as well if we do the same thing. If we kind of, like a miner, we fly over the mountain and we say, hey, that's the part where we're going to find some jewels. 
And then we, if we take the, the, the parts and we go to the right area, the right geography of that mountain, we go, this is where we need to dig. And then when you actually are digging in for the actual details, that's where you find the gems that are of such great reward. And I would just want you to know that finding the gems in God's word is more precious and more rewarding than if somebody were to come and on a velvet pillow hand you a jewel. It's just so exciting when you begin to dig out the nuggets of God's word and to see all that's there. And to do this, you need to observe the text and ask, what do I see? What do I see in the whole part? What do I see in the parts? What do I see in the details? And so this is how you do it. Here's a couple of steps that I want you to follow. Number one, you need to read the word of God with care. And by care, I mean when you're reading God's word, uh, don't just read it once read it repeatedly. That's reading God's word with care. You're going to see things when you read it more than once. And so you can reread parts. Maybe you reread the whole chapter, but that's when you really begin to, to, to find the, the joy of it. And the second thing is to read it thoughtfully. Here's what I do. Sometimes I go out on my, on my uh, balcony at, at uh, my house and I read God's word and, and, and suddenly I'm, I'm sitting there and I begin to, I start reading a chapter and, and then uh, something catches my attention. And I just start thinking about other things. And I'm still kind of reading, but I'm not really concentrating on it. And that's not reading thoughtfully. And so when you read it with care, you read it repeatedly and you read it thoughtfully. Don't, don't be distracted. And then finally, read it patiently. In other words, sometimes I just want to get to the end and I'm checking a task off my list. And this is what I do first. And, and that's not what we're doing here. We need to read it patiently. You need to take time. Now, listen, I encourage you to set aside time every day and, and, and dedicate that time to it so that you can not be distracted. But here's the thing. I'm not asking for hours of your life. I'm not even asking for one hour. I'm not even asking for 30 minutes. You, you decide how much time you want to begin to dedicate to God's word each day. Maybe it starts with 10 minutes. That, that's a great place to start. I would encourage you to start with 10 minutes. If you're not reading God's word every day and feeding yourself, start there. 10 minutes. Just dedicate 10 minutes. You can read a paragraph of scripture a couple of times in that time, and I would encourage you to start there. And once you get to 10, you're going to want to go to 15 and 20. You're going to look forward to those times. But don't start trying to do the whole thing. Start with just a little bit right here. So we want to read with care. That's repeatedly, thoughtfully, and patiently. You want to secondly record your impressions. I would encourage you to get a little journal. And listen, I'm not a big person for journaling. I don't I don't do a great job with it. But find a spot where you can just kind of write down some things and have that uh, there. The third thing is um, uh, write down the major facts. And so write down the qu- facts that answer the questions: what, who where, and when. And if you have just a little journal, you can write that down. What, who, where, when. And then when you read a passage, you just kind of fill that out. What's going on? Who is involved? When is this happening? Uh, that, that's how, we, how you do that. And then recognize you don't ask, ask the question why yet. That actually happens in step two of interpretation. But for right now, just what, who, where, and when. And then just Fourth step is just make a little list of your observations. Just say, hey, verse one, I see this. Verse two, I see this. Verse three, I'm seeing these things. And you say, what are you looking for? Well, look for repeated words or repeated concepts. Just kind of note those down. Look for the connectors, words like therefore or so that or but that you may. uh, Words that kind of connect things in the structure right there. And then the last thing I would encourage you in observation is I believe color is fun. And so I have highlighters that I use for my Bible reading and all these colors mean something when I'm in God's word. If I were to highlight something in this yellow, it's a major point that I need to know. If I highlight it in this green, every time I see the something referring to God or Jesus or the Holy Spirit, I just say, so that the son of man may, and I write, and I highlight son of man, that's all the things that are talking about God. My pink is for uh, miracles or the supernatural, and I have other colors and a code for that. And I, it not only makes it fun, but it helps me to organize all that I have. And so <clears throat> when you look at making observations, you look at the whole, you look at the parts, you look at the details, and the way you do that is uh, that you read it with care, repeatedly, thoughtfully, 
patiently. Uh, you record your impressions. You have somewhere to write it down. The things you write down, answer the questions what, who, when, where, and then you make a list of all the major observations of repeated words or phrases or important things that are going on there. So I want to give you now your homework. Yeah, we're going to practice the principle, and uh, the way that we're going to do this is I'm going to give you another uh, chance to look at the book of Jude, and you're going to write down all your different observations, and you're going to follow what I just said here, and, and highlight things, and underline things, circle things, write them down in an orderly fashion, uh, and the next session we're going to talk about interpreting those facts along the way. And so uh, I send you off with some homework. Again, two parts. You need to read 2 Timothy, uh, all four chapters, and each time you read the chapter, just take a little bit of time to make some observations. Don't be long, just, just some basic observations. And then the second thing is we're continuing to memorize Psalm chapter 19, verses 7 to 11. Uh, the, the Word of God is perfect, reviving the soul. Uh, we want to be revived in that. And so let's continue to do this study together. Uh, you are alive. Hey! Open the gates and let your glory